Hi, I'm Peter and we've teamed up with Brown Hills and they've let us have an Evolution 196 from Elvis to show you what you need to know when you first take a trip away in your new motorhome. Taking your first trip away in a motorhome can seem a bit daunting at first. There's so many systems to get your head around. Fortunately, the latest generation of motorhomes have been designed to be really easy and intuitive to use. So what do you need to know when you first get on a campsite pitch? Well, let's show you how to set up your motorhome. On uh, most motorhomes, you travel with the fresh water tank empty and fill them up when you get on the campsite. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing you need is your water hose. So it's stored in the locker. So grab your water hose. This hose has been supplied with a hose lock connector already on, the, the female part. Uh, the male part you sometimes need to screw onto the taps. It's best to go for a full service pitch if you can, particularly if it's your first time away, because it will have a water tap on site. If there isn't one on your pitch, you might need to drive and find the water tap on the campsite to fill up. So once you've identified where your tap is, it's just a case of connecting your hose up. Okay, this is your fresh water fill point. So just unlock the hatch. It just slides up and then your hose just pops in there. So just pop your hose in a little bit and then go and switch the uh, water on. So you can hear the water going in. And when it starts coming out the top, which it is doing now, it's not far off full this tank. So it'll either start coming out of here or it'll start coming out under the van. Okay, and that's it. Shut your uh, cover off and lock it up. Okay, one of the first things you're going to want to do is level the vehicle up. This makes the bed level, makes the table level, it also makes the fridge work more effectively. So we grab our levelling blocks out. These ones come in a nice bag. So grab your levelling blocks. Okay, pop it under the front tyre and just give it a kick, just so it wedges in. Uh, pop your other, other block in, give it a kick. Time to get in the cab. Pop the window down, pop it in first gear. So just pop your head out of the window so you can see the ramp and stop it when you get to the level you want. Leave it in gear, put the handbrake firmly on, switch off the engine. You must always keep it in gear with the handbrake firmly on when you're pitched up. To plug in your mains hookup cable, first of all, get it out of the service hatch. And retrieve the cable. Pop with our mains hookup cable down there. Some motorhomes have an external uh, connection point. This one uh, is in a locker. So open up the locker and look for your... So the female end is denoted by the spring up cap. This plugs into your motorhome first. On this particular one, we route it. There's a little slot in the door, which keeps it nice and protected from the weather. So just pop it in there. Shut the hatch up. So after you've plugged it into the motorhome, plug it in, the male end into the electric hookup point. Make sure the cable is dangling freely, it's not tensioned like this, and no one can trip over the wires. The other point to make about your main hookup cable is make sure it's always fully unwound. If you store it on a reel or a cassette, it must be fully unwound. This is to avoid a heating effect in the cable, which can cause issues. So always unwind your main hookup cable and keep it out of the way. Tuck it under the motor home and make sure it's not a trip hazard to anyone. This pitch is quite close by to the motor home, but on some foreign pitches, particularly Dutch pitches for some reason, it tends to be miles away from the pitch. So it's always a good idea to have a, a long mains hookup cable. 
you can't beat having a long cable. If you haven't got mains electricity in your van, first thing to check is on the electric hookup bollard, check this trip switch hasn't tripped out. This particular one's got a uh, test button on it, so you can push it. That simulates power going off. So if you come to it and there's a naught showing, just flick it up and you should get power on in your motorhome. So that's the first thing to check is the trip switch on the bollard if you don't have mains power in the van. Once you're plugged into uh, the mains hookup, you're going to want to switch your control panel on. This button here is the master control switch. You can also put your water pump on. It also gives you a level uh, of your freshwater tank. So in this case, our freshwater tank is full. And if you push this button, it tells you that the wastewater tank is empty. So that's all good. You can also push this battery marker button and that will give you how much uh, voltage is left. We're all in the green, so it's all good. You've also got additional light switches. That's for the main lighting. It's the awning light. Once you get on campsite, you're also going to want to switch your gas on. Unlock the locker, push in the catches and open the hatch door. Now this particular motorhome has a gaslow system, but it works in pretty much the same way as any other system. So the first thing you do is switch on the gas taps. This one's got two cylinders and we switch both on because it's got an automatic changeover valve. It will automatically swap from the empty cylinder to a full cylinder when the gas level drops. This particular motorhome has a gas low system, which is a refillable gas system. To fill it up, you need to remove this cap. It works like a, a bayonet fitting on a, on a bulb. Reveals this brass filling point. This attaches to the hose uh, from an LPG pump on a petrol station. And the good thing about it is it can be used all around Europe. You need various different adapters to fit onto this uh, nozzle, uh, but you can buy a pack of them uh, from a, a motorhome dealer. But yeah, it's a really good system and it works out a lot cheaper than uh, buying uh, colour gas bottles. On this particular van, you've also got this useful addition, which is a gas barbecue point. Connect your gas hose from your barbecue, keep it a good distance from your motorhome, turn the tap on. One of the things you probably want to know about if you're camping in Britain is how the heating works. Well, very simple. Uh, you just need to whack on the button on the control panel. The good news is modern motorhomes are really well insulated, so you'll keep toasty warm year round. This particular uh, Evolution 196 uses a whale heating system. So you make sure the master switch is on. You come down here on the control panel. You'll see a button marked heating. Poke it. So on the heating uh, bar, you've got plus and minus. If you go minus, you can adjust the heating level. So we'll have it on full tilt. It's cold today. Uh, to put the hot water on, push the button mark water heating. You'll see a little flame come on. It'll take a little time to heat the water up and you'll soon be able to take uh, a nice hot shower. <laughs> Lots of campsites have their own toilet block, um, but it's more convenient to use your own toilet. So this is a typical Thetford cassette loo. It's got a swivel bowl, so you can angle it to where you want it. Lift it up. To use it, toilet flap on the side. There's a little lever here to open it and to flush it, just press that button. It flushes from the um, fresh water tanks. There's no need to add chemicals to it. The only chemicals you need to add to this one are in the cassette itself. Um, when you're done using it, just shut the flap and shut the lid. Okay, to empty your cassette toilet, open the hatch, pull up the lever at the bottom and just slide the whole unit out. You'll notice it's on wheels and it also has a handy pull out handle just like uh, a suitcase at the airport. Mm -hmm. 
So what you need to do is uh, lift the cassette up, fold out the nozzle, unscrew the cap, and then this button here releases the air pressure inside. Once you've emptied your loo, it's a good idea just to fill it up with a little bit of fresh water, give it a shake, and then just empty out that. Once you've emptied your loo, don't forget to flush it and give it a rinse round. Put the cap back on, uh, angle the nozzle out of the way, and then just lift the handle up again. Don't forget to wash your hands after you've emptied your loo. Okay, once you've got your toilet back to your camper van, you need to refill the chemicals. All you need to do is add the appropriate amount of chemical for your toilet size in here, and then tip it into the loo, and simply screw it on. So push it in until it latches in place. It needs to latch down there. When it's latched in place, it's in the correct position. When you're removing your cassette or refitting it, always make sure that the toilet flap is shut on the inside. It does have a safety mechanism to prevent you accidentally opening it, but uh, it's best to make sure it's always shut. And then that's it. Just need to shut your hatch and you're done. Right, to use the shower, you've got a shower curtain here that needs to pull across. It's not to protect the toilet, there's some wooden cabinets there. So with the shower pulled across, the, uh, this is an eco shower head, hence the, the few rings and things. Uh, it, just, it works like uh, a regular uh, shower at home. A good tip about uh, using the shower is you always need to be economical with water in a motorhome because you've got a finite amount of water. Um, so it's a good idea to switch it off when you're lathering yourself up and just use it for rinsing and sort of soaking yourself in it. Most motorhome fridges run on 12 volt mains or gas. Some have automatic energy selection, AES fridges, some are manual selection like this one. So if you get to your fridge and it's not on, the light's not on, it's not on. We're on mains hookup at the moment. So on mains hookup, the light comes on indicating the fridge is working. 12 volt battery, we have that, that's you basically used when you're on the road. You don't want to use that if you don't have an electric hookup. If you don't have an electric hookup, you want to switch it to the gas selection. So I'll switch to the gas selection. To light the gas, you need to push the temperature dial in and press the igniter button. You'll see, you can then release those. If it's lit correctly, you'll see this needle moving into the green. You can adjust the fridge temperature with the dial, but leave it on maximum to start off with and then adjust it later. If the temperature gets below eight degrees Celsius, you might want to add the winter vents uh, for your fridge. Uh, they're stored in here. To fit them, you need a screwdriver or a coin. Okay, so the, the wider one goes on the lower uh, vent and it just clips in at the top and secures with a clip. The top vent is the narrower one and it clips in at the top. You make sure these lugs are attached, push it in at the bottom, and then rotate these clips, and that's your winter vents on. So why do you need to put winter vents on? Well, the number one reason is it makes the fridge work better when it's below eight degrees outside air temperature. They also stop the worst of the winter weather getting in to the back of the fridge. It is all sealed back there, but it just prevents sort of 90 degree rain steaming in. So that's what winter vents are for. Okay, kitchen area. There's not a lot to set up. Flip the sink lid up. You've got
got a uh, draining tray, nice. Tap, you know how that works. The gas hob, again, has a lift up lid. You need to lift the lid up and it, you can't have it propped like that because they have anti-cutout valves. And then to ignite it, just switch on a burner, press the igniter. Now if the gas doesn't light up straight away, I'll just switch that off, I don't want to cook it. If the gas doesn't light up straight away, check the isolator taps are in the correct position and that the gas bottle is switched on. Isolator taps, if you come down here, I'll show you where they are, located in here. This is for the oven, that's for the heating system. Gas hob isn't lighting and you know you've got gas, move those 90 degrees and it should work. You've also got a gas oven that lights in exactly the same way on the controls and a uh, gas grill. This particular hob also has a separate hot plate, so it's a proper dual fuel hob that works on 240 volt mains. When it's all cool, put the lid down, but wait until it's cool. The microwaves run on 240 volt mains. It's best to use them on an electric hookup. You can get them to run on an inverter, but it's quite an expensive piece of kit and it does sap all the power out of your batteries quite rapidly. So it's best to use them just on mains. Um, it's a usual regular domestic microwave. So set time here, or you can just press 30 seconds if you just want to warm some milk up. Regular microwave, very easy to use. One thing that's worth mentioning when you're on a, a campsite hookup, most of them are 16 amp or 10 amp in the UK. Um, in Europe, they can go as low as 5 amps. What does this mean? Well, it limits the amount of power you have. To give you an idea, if you're on a 16 amp hookup, you have 3,840 watts of power. What's that look like? Well, that's a kettle at home, a little bit more powerful than a kettle at home. So if you take your domestic products, your kettles, your toasters, your hair straighteners, and try and use them all simultaneously in a motome, you'll trip the RCD. So it's best to use low power uh, devices such as kettles uh, and toasters. You can buy these uh, from a motorhome shop and many dealers sell them. So it's well worth investing in those. They're not particularly expensive and it saves you uh, tripping out uh, the hookup bollard. If you do trip out the bollard or have any issues um, with 240 volt power, you need to check at your consumer unit and on this particular one, you've also got your 12 volt fuses. If any of the electrical systems on your motorhome stop working, the first thing to check is the 12 volt system. This protects the individual systems from damage. So for example, if your lighting stops working, look down here, lights one, lights two, you've got these two fuses here. When you do replace a fuse, just pull it out, and just check to see if it's blown in the middle section. If it has blown, replace it with another fuse and make sure it has the same amp rating. So in this case, it's a 10 amp fuse, but if it's a five amp fuse, it must always be replaced with a five amp fuse. All these fuses have a set rating for each circuit. If it does keep blowing fuses when you replace it, you need to take the vehicle back to your dealer and just get it checked over and find out what the problem is. One of the first things you want to do when you get on site is uh, probably set up your awning. So the first thing to grab is your awning uh, pole. Uh, this is normally, it's quite a big thing, so it's difficult to hide in a moto. Normally under the rear bench seats. On this particular Evolution 196, that's where you'll find it. So shut the door. And up here you'll see there's a little lug and this end piece slots in there. All you do is rotate the handle, hold this still and rotate the lower part of the handle and you'll see the awning starts to drop out of the cassette. So wind it out. You wind it out a little bit, then just pop the handle down and the legs are on a spring clip. Just push it to 
to release it and then you can pull out the leg. So you just get one of the legs out. So unclip the leg, pull it out, just support it a little bit, lift up the height you want, click it down, plastic trim fall into place just to lock it in place and just repeat it on the other side and it slides down slides down and all you need to do click it down let that latch fall into place these have uh, little holes in them those are for tent pegs you want to get some nice big tent pegs in those to secure it on a grass pitch that stops it flapping around in uh, higher breezes you want to use storm straps and in uh, more extreme windy conditions you want to wind the awning in. Your owner's manual will say the maximum wind speed that they can withstand. So there you go, nice outdoor space. You can put your outdoor furniture in here, it stays nice and dry. You can also purchase additional side screens if you want a bit more protection from the elements. But uh, it's a really useful outdoor space, shades you from the sun, or shelters you from the rain. Very worthwhile having an outside awning. This particular model has uh, swivel cab seats in the cab. Very convenient feature to have on site. So to rotate them, just pull the lever at the base and start to turn them. Sometimes you need to slide the seat forward and backwards to clear a bit of the door, or you might need to adjust the backrest, but spin it round and then adjust it into the position you want. And then you can pop the armrest down if you choose. In the cab, you've got two sets of blinds. You've got built-in blinds uh, around the cab, and you've also got curtains. So. To shut the uh, cab blinds, just pinch them together and slide them across. They're magnetic, so they clip together. They don't need any force. And as these are a papery material, you need to be quite gentle with the side windows when you're packing them away. At night time, you're going to want to put the blinds down. There's, there's two types in this motorhome, a simple pull-down blind like this and blinds that cover the roof lights like that. So that's all the, the blinds down. The rear bed, very easy to set up. It just pulls together and the cushions drop down into place. We'll show you how that works now. Make up the beds, just lift up the base, pull it out and do the same on the other side until they meet and then just pull the cushions forward and they easily drop into place. One of the cool features about this particular uh, motorhome is it's got an electric drop down bed at the touch of a button, you can have your bed made up. So, how about that, very Bond style. It automatically stops when it's in the right place. And then all you need to do is add the ladder and you can get up. This has a mesh screen for kids. You can fold it under the mattress if you don't want to use it. It's a nice uh, cold foam mattress uh, up top here, so you'll get a good night's sleep. And when you finish using it, and when you want to set off in the morning, just pop the ladder back in the middle, press the button, and away it goes. It packs itself. To put it away, just move the cushions out of the way, lift the backrest up. It's easiest to push the cushion back first. And then just lift the base up. You need to lift it up just so it latches in place and doesn't slide out on the road. Slide the whole lot back, put your cushions back, and then lift up the base 
and just lift it and latch it into place. And that's it. We're good to go. When you're ready to leave the campsite, make sure all the cupboards are shut and latched and the roof light is shut and latched and any windows that you've opened make sure they're securely latched and just go around the van and check everything fridge door washroom door cupboard doors any blinds that are secured on the side make sure everything's shut and safe and there's nothing loose that will roll around your van Okay, to pack it away, basically the reverse of uh, procedure. Start winding the mechanism in, just do a little bit at a time. So the secret to winding awnings in is moving the legs a little bit at a time. You want to lower the legs down. You just click this one up to the closed position. It will self-support to a certain extent. Slide this leg up to the top, click it in and spin it round so that it's, uh, the foot's pointing downwards and let it spring back and latch in that clasp. Let's lift it up and okay the foot needs to be pointing down the stick the uh, leg angles you need to angle it so the foot's pointing down then push it back in it's spring loaded and it springs back to secure in this latch it needs to be secured it's a good idea to have someone support it at this stage if you can, but if not, it just winds in. And there you go. And don't forget to take your handle off and store it safely inside. Okay, when it's ready to leave the campsite, always remove the plug from the mains hookup first. This is to stop you having a mains cable lying around on the ground in a puddle. It wouldn't be dangerous, but it might trip the bollard and it's best avoided. So always remove the plug from the hookup bollard first. Next, you need to pull the plug out of the motorhome and lock the hatch and coil up your cable. When you leave the campsite, you're going to want to empty your wastewater tank. This grey tap here, helpfully labelled closed and open, is where you empty it from. And you need to position this nozzle over the motorhome empty point. This particular campsite doesn't have one, but you'd normally drive over a grid, open up the tap and let it empty. It takes a few minutes to empty uh, the wastewater tank. The, quite large on motorhomes so while it's emptying it's a good time to go and empty your chemical loo. The blue tap is the water drain point for your fresh water tank. When you're winterising your vehicle you'll need to open that up and make sure all the water's out of the system but for normal use you probably won't touch that. a shake and then just empty out that. Don't forget to wash your hands after you've emptied your loo. Okay once you've got everything packed away you've checked all your latches uh, shut on your cupboards the fridge door shut the washroom door shut everything's packed away and nothing can rattle around but it's time to get off the blocks and get on the road and just gradually ease back nice and gentle hold it on the brake until you're clear so hopefully that's given you a good overview of all the systems and all the things you need to know on your first trip away don't forget you're on a campsite you're on a holiday you can always ask other people to help and they'll be too happy to help you the main thing is you have a great time Right, well I think I've got everything packed away, so off to the next campsite. <laughs> <laughs>